My name is Fernando Nardi and uh, I am uh, giving you a lecture on hydro meteo climate risk and cultural heritage, bringing the engineering perspective of the WaterDoc Center. I'm the former director of the WaterDoc and I'm now a professor of hydrology and hydraulic engineering at the University of Rome, Tor Vergata. As engineers, we are providing to Charisma um, some quantification methods uh, for understanding modeling, mapping, and managing the impacts of climate change on cultural heritage. So, in the first lecture, I already gave you the definition and the impacts of uh, climate-related hydrometric extreme. In the second lecture, I'm going to talk to you about risk assessment and the three major components, hazard, exposure, and vulnerability. How do we assess risk? How do we quantify the impacts of climate, climate extremes? We need quantitative information following the principle I already explained to you in Lecture 1. Which would, this major principle are related to the fact that we not only are requested to understand and analyze the biophysical specifications of the disasters, if there is intense precipitation, rivers will see levels of the water increase and the flood may occur. This is the biophysical component that requires geospatial data of land systems, water system, and the dynamics of the water falling from the sky, precipitation, the then dry runoff and flooding like in the picture you see here in the bottom left. These are the biophysical components. But the quantification of the risk also requires to understand the specification of, of the social, economic and cultural dynamics affecting or characterizing the land where the disaster occur. The same biophysical pressure, the same biophysical dynamics may have completely different impacts in one region of the world or in another one as a function of the societal, economic and cultural specifications. The way society develop that region of the world, the way economy is organized and, and is developing, and the way people behave and move and respond and react the, the cultural component are major factors determining the impacts of the disaster. Again, for the, also for the same biophysical component. So the definition, the engineering definition of the risk is uh, as a consequence associated to three components. Hazard, that you can read the hazard as related to bad biophysical specification and then exposure and vulnerability. The exposure and the vulnerability are the two factors uh, associated also to, again, the social, economic and cultural conditions. So risk is expressed as the like likelihood of loss of life, injury or destruction and damage from a disaster in a given period of time. You may also start to think that there are, there are statistical conditions that we need to understand and define. There is a frequency of happening of one disaster. And uh, if you consider a range of time very large, like 500 years, you're going to have, uh, uh, in that range of time, more likelihood that a major disaster may occur. If you consider a smaller time range, like 10 years, uh, the, 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 the statistical, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, free, you know the, the probability of a big disaster to occur, of course, is less. So, disaster risk uh, is, the score, is therefore considered as the combination of the severity and frequency of a hazard, the number of people and assets exposed to the hazard, and the vulnerability to the damage. So, you see the risk is a combination, is the summary of three terms, hazard, exposure, vulnerability, and these three terms shall be 
identified and quantified. Hazard is the process, phenomenon or human activity that may cause loss of life, injury or other health impacts, property damage, social and economic disruption or environmental degradation. Hazard may be natural, anthropogenic or social natural in origin. The hazard, again, are predominantly associated with natural processes and phenomena. These are the nature-based phenomena determining hazard conditions for our land. Anthropogenic hazard or human-induced hazard are the human-induced activities that may always provide the loss of lives or property to assets. And these are linked to human activities, human choices, human behavior. And these are also very important devastating factors for our society. So going into engineering descriptions, uh, you can see here in this schematic the three components, hazard, vulnerability, and elements at risk. The hazard is uh, uh, also quantified by some components. There is a probability of the desert scenario, and this is uh, usually associated to the return time principle. You need to consider the hazard type, like a flood, like an earthquake or a landslide, and other characteristics, like a duration time or, or the interaction of different hazard components uh, and also the hazard intensity the spatial distribution or other distribution factors. The vulnerability is the degree of loss of loss of damages to a specific asset type. Okay, given the intensity of a specific hazard scenario. So as you see, you have for increasing hazard intensity, increase in vulnerability. And you may have a weaker or a stronger asset so weaker more vulnerable or stronger less vulnerable asset for the same hazard type for example like a concrete building is less vulnerable like a light material building like a wood building okay and then uh, you have the exposure elements at risk the quantification of the exposed elements at risk like, for example, the number or distribution of buildings of the mon monetary value, also of this. And then you also here, you have some special and temporal specifications of the elements at risk. I, I will see in this slide. For example, you see in this uh, schematic, in this plot, a river where water depth zoning like flood zoning mapping, defining increasing water levels as a function of the distance from the river. And then you see the schematic representation of buildings that may have a low, medium or high, or high vulnerability. And then you may also have uh, roads depicted as uh, flooded, potentially flooded roads or non-flooded roads with some uh, road blockages. And as you can see, there is like a levy, like an embankment or wall that is protecting the urban system from the flood. If you see, you have some directly exposed asset and some assets that may be not affected, no exposure, or there is also an indirect exposure. That means if the, the if the levy fails, if there is like a levy breach, the embankment fails, uh, the water is gonna flood uh, the asset. So this is a way of depicting in a graphic representation uh, the risk matrix with the three components. Here you have the hazard, the blue color of the biophysical flooding dynamics, and you have the vulnerability with the light red or dark red of the elements at risk and you also have the distribution of the exposure of some of the directly exposed no exposed or indirectly exposed so if you put in other schematic representation this uh, risk assessment procedure you're gonna have uh, the three dimensions of the risk like the hazard exposure vulnerability 
And here there is another component, the coping capacity. The mitigation factor of society responding to risk is, a, is another potential component for the risk, risk assessment uh, matrix, matrix methodology. And then you may also have uh, categories, natural or human, socioeconomic and vulnerable groups, institutional infrastructure, and then all the components. Without the read them all, you can see in the risk matrix, uh, the biophysical components, earthquake, floods, cyclones, landslide, uh, the vulnerability component. And please give a look of all the terms and also of the coping capacity. Now I want you to uh, think again uh, what we already discussed about the fact that the risk assessment is a function of the biophysical hazard components, but also of the social, economic uh, and cultural dimensions. You see the development deprivation, the inequalities, uh, the economy. These are all components uh, that uh, has, have to be understood and quantified for a proper, full, integrated, multidisciplinary risk assessment. Let me give you some more like information, like residual risk. Here you see, bottom right, a urban system of the city of Rome. And on the left, you see the yellow zone of flood risk. These are the official flood zoning maps of the city of Rome. The blue is the river system. The yellow are the, the, the flooding zone that, uh, as you may see, if you know a bit Rome, correspond to the levees protecting the city from, uh, from the river system in potential flood conditions. But if you, if you don't consider the levee system in Rome, hypothetically, you will see that the flood zones will be the green map that is uh, showing in this animation. These are the residual risk areas. If there is a potentially levy failure, you will have like a zoning of flood of the green color. So this uh, is a representation of residual risk. Residual risk is not only the risk that you, you don't think you have, because you will always consider the city protected by solid, unbreakable levies, but it is a general principle that you can uh, read as a definition in this slide. The risk that remains uh, unmanaged, unknown, even when an effective disaster reduction measures are in place, like levies, or for which emergency response and recovery capacities mu must be maintained. Okay, so it's it's a uh, the residual risk uh, is related to the uncertainty conditions we have when we think about hydroclimate extremes and when we think about exposure vulnerability. There is always the importance component of our knowledge as a risk manager of dealing with uncertainty. So risk assessment is characterized by varying significant degrees of uncertainty. And this uncertainty is both linked to the natural variability of hazard phenomena. There's a natural conditions. Disasters, climate, are stochastic processes driven by uncertainty. Is the random behavior of nature. But then there is an interlinked uh, component uh, with the sum of the information that we should know and we don't know. We don't know if a levy system will fail or not. Sometimes uh, a, a risk mitigation measure like a levy or a reservoir or other building properties for making the buildings resistant to earthquakes, we don't know how they will behave in critical conditions. This is also a statistical, stochastic process or feature of the exposure vulnerability, but it is also linked to the fact that there will always, there will always be knowledge gaps, lack of information, lack of knowledge that will drive uncertainty of the risk management assessment, analytical procedure. So for example, inundation dynamics and levy features are well-known unknown. The lack of knowledge drives uncertainty.